goes. Slow change of play. Rain is coming, so the guys have decided they work together, these two. Both climbers are going to do a better catch. We're going to get the sweet corner, and everything's going to be bring up. design like it's a uh... hey guys back here away from the track that don't ever run towards the track to see where he's going right I don't know if it's his own custom basic design but yeah he built it from the ground up man it sounds good too I don't like John Deere's but I don't mind a uh a 7-8 so he's going there the other guy should be showing up over there, but I guess it's John Deere's broken down, so... So what they do is they do four rounds of the paddock. Three, four, whatever he's done. He has actually only done his headlands here. That's interesting. That's quite cool. And then he's going to do up and down for the rest of it. So I'm not sure if you guys can tell just, just within the video, but, but these rows are 15 inches or 375mm apart. The ones we were doing over there are 500. Now... This drill in this paddock can close up and widen out between the two. Sorry? Yeah, where these lines are, guys, it's been planted, okay? Um, this one here, he can adjust, but it's half a day to do, so it stays at 15s. Um, yeah, the idea being you give the plants a little bit more room in the row, and you have the rows a bit closer together, so the seeds are a bit further apart. We won't find them here because they shouldn't be planted here. Further apart this way. But closer together that way um to give a little bit more square i think he was at one point we were talking 375 but 375 but i don't think it quite works out that way um that might get a bit low on the seating rate so yeah where is hamish what's hamish up to <laughs> Spencer, what well, have we got to miss? You'll have to wait and find out about that one, guys. You'll find out at the end of the video. Little uh, project we've got going on.
Lindsay here. So this one is precision direct drilling. That's me. As opposed to Hamish over there. The guys working together a lot, but that's golden ag. Hamish golden. So anyway, we've heard a spiel from Hamish about why his drill's the best in the world. Why is yours the second best? Oh, it depends what you're doing. So Hamish is a better drill. You're around a technology. And it is everything. generation two of this one. Yeah, which it. is Mark two. Yeah. Um, I like mine better because it's bigger. <laughs> And the, the trail thing is cool. And I love being trail. Like, yeah. I could never go back to being young enough to be trail. Yeah. And, that, and yeah, the, the three ton torque bit is a bit of a talking point. Um, some people ask why, why anyone would want three ton of ferret on, but yeah, but where's the weight go? Weight goes on the drawbar. Yep. When you pull in, pull into the job, 15 hectares, 250 kilo, one fill in the yard, drive to the field, get going, so and you're done. No having to stop, there's no having to run it down. You can uh, you can run it down and chuck chuck two tons or two and a half ton in with, without having to get right to the end. So, uh, it's been hopper, run it right down so you can get the full bag in. And it's been bloody handy like I was running bags up the road to Hamish today. Occasionally bags do split open. <laughs> and it's it's a disaster. It would always so, be right too, right? Yeah, exactly. Um yeah, I have heard a few comments from people over the years on Twitter particularly that think they know everything claiming that your balance on this pipe is all wrong but I don't think they understand that the wheels often aren't on the ground but there's no front wheel then are they? No, so, yeah, people sometimes think the wheels should be at the back of it Yeah But that would take more, that would take more drawbar weight off it when I was towing it it would give me lots more when I lift it Yeah At the moment I lose drawbar weight when I lift it but that's alright because the whole point is to be in the ground but the argument is the units have it acting down for us today. I have yeah. seen it where the wheels actually aren't, they're, they're lifted fully up off the ground. Yeah, so quite often so. when we're drink drilling and we run, run low and fur, if you're in hard, hard country, you have to sort of watch the speeds and if you start pushing up over 8 or 9 k's, it takes a lot more downforce to keep it down and then right here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where you start getting it. The drill wheels will be completely in the air and it's running on the, on the tool bar. And the whole reason for you starting this whole, whole business was the direct drilling cycle, wasn't it? Well, that, that was where we developed our niche. Yeah. We really took off. We, that was what, that and 15 inch rows is where we went yes. from being just another planter to, hey, we're, we're precision direct drilling. 15 inch rows is the reason you weren't up here. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. 15 inch rows is where we went from doing 200 hectares a year to. Over yeah, a over a thousand this year, yeah. it'll be all over. And to be fair, here we haven't seen much of a yield difference between the 20s and the 15s. I think there is a benefit there. Uh, there's definitely a, a wee benefit in the sense that you get, you, you get more of a canopy. canopy. But we are probably the exception to the rule in the sense that we're high fertility and we're doing things as well as we can. And uh, we're in the establishment of our sweet crop, we're not focusing on cost, we're focusing on outcomes. The total crop is cost based, but a lot of people are looking just for, for a, a strictly cost based thing. And the 15 inch rows give you a lot more options, don't they? Absolutely, that's where I do get the odd comment from people that um, say, oh shit, you're quite expensive. And then you sort of got to work backwards and say, well, what's your outcome? Do you yeah. want do you want a 10 ton crop or a 12 ton crop, or do you want to be pushing for an 18 or 20 ton crop? And how are we going to get there? And the way there is close rows and put the effort into it, making sure you look after it, fertilise it, Absolutely. Keep, keep up the uh, insecticide and herbicides if needed. But yeah, the 15 inch rows definitely get a quicker canopy, which the southern south, and that's not always the biggest deal from a uh, from a moisture point of view, but from catching sunlight, we're getting a better plant spread, more consistent plant spread across the paddock, so that we can utilise more sun, because that's our biggest downfall down here. And then as we head into northern, southern and central south, where it gets a bit drier, we're holding that moisture under a strong canopy. Absolutely that's, agree. That's where we're getting the bigger yields. Of my, my top yielding guys are, are drink drilling and yielding as well as the top cultivating guys. That is almost unheard of. As soon as you say drink drilling, most people's eyes roll and they say, oh, shit yields and, and just sort of switch off the whole idea. And that's what I say, no till no yield, but uh, you know, you're, you're slowly proving me wrong. Oh, I'm going horses for courses on that. <laughs> <laughs> but ironically, you, you, 
you can be able to present a nice segment. I used to get quite frustrated with people that would uh, make a poor job of plowing a tidy paddock and then work it really poorly yeah. and make me a really horrible work to see if like, you could just go and drill your grass paddock and we get off the top and get yeah. off. But just, just remember I'm a better pair harrow man than I am a plowman at the moment, so... Uh, yeah. well, you should yeah. show everyone a picture of this because this is... <laughs> this has the... Uh, Seabed. We'll just turn these around. It's it's not bad. I like to think we've done it right. It's pretty low cost. The, the big thing we're looking at is how deep the units are sinking in, basically, isn't it? Like the units are able to do their thing with the rows they're making. Yeah. And they're and not they're not gouging. We're not making trenches because you know, if the paddock's too soft, it uh, winds up looking like you've bridged it. Yeah. Well, literally. Except, except that you're seeing all of the bottom of the trenches, which is is great if you're worried about sandblasting. And not great if you were worried about not drowning plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. But ultimately, you've got to get that, that soil consolidated. Yeah, and, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. The soil to keep contact. Not. We do have struck it a few different blocks around the place, particularly in sandier soils and finer soils that are really free. And um, we come in and run this through, and it, it's quite hard work running it because it's trying to bury itself all the time. And then when it comes to weighing the crop up, we're like, oh, it's a bit disappointing. We've got a lot of pretty poor emergence and a lot of plants missing and the guts of it is that it's just too loose. Yep. And then it's yep. consistent across all planters. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's just well, all, all, it's not even planters, that's drills, that's everything. Yeah, it's consistent yeah. across all methods. If you don't get good seed to soil contact, you don't get good, absolutely. good strong establishment. You don't, it's a hard one. You don't want to compact the soil too much, but at the same time, you've got to get a lot of that free air out of it. No, yeah. Cool. No, so uh, looking at your wheel tracks, the track the wheel tracks is looking to me is if you're um, if you're sinking way in and seeing the print of the casing of the tire, it's too soft. Yeah. yeah. And if you're not actually getting the, any of the casing on the ground, it's probably too hard. The you exception there being what just happened there, because people have just seen that that's happened there. And that's because he's being rough and turning too hard and scuffing my soil. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, no. No, hills, hills do change that a bit, but as you're driving along on flat ground, absolutely. Well, in a straight line. Yeah, we've been running down the at all those plovers out there, would you? I need to get my rifle out here and tidy some of them up. No, they, they need all your grub. They chase all the horse catches away, too. Yeah, rather than horse catches without it. Oh, guys, he's coming back, but he's, uh, not quite finished yet. Hmm. Righto guys, we pet project. Sweet corn, 23. I think we're a bit earlier than last year actually. Might have been early December last year we got this so it's gonna be interesting. I'm not convinced the season is gonna allow us to get what we got last year. But we planted too deep. Sorry, I'm probably getting another one for a sec. We planted too deep. We had a drought, which it loves the heat, but it needs rain. And we still got a decent crop, and the sheep keep breaking in and eating it, but that's not going to be an issue this year, so... Should be quite 
There's one. There we go. I saw him right there. There's one. That's too deep, do you reckon? Marginal, wasn't it? There's the other one there, he was he wasn't quite that far down but I don't reckon we're too we're certainly not two inches. No, we're, no, we're no, 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 definitely not. Where'd he go? This is the I might be a little bit Might be an inch and a half though, mind not. We might be thirty mil, yeah. Yeah. We lift him up one click. Oh no, there's that bugger there. I just need to sort of want to check my spacing too because I was having a go up trying to yep. figure out what the rake needs to be to I in road space. I don't but, think that's too bad because here's one here. There's one, there's the next one there. Where'd he go? Right there. Oh, there. Oh, Barry, you know, real hard pack. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Right, so I reckon the depth is good. I'm inclined to agree. I think a little bit deep is better than a little bit shallow for this because it's a tricky plant. She's the next morning. And the spray man's turned up. Presuming that's a bit of a purge of water through the bar. Hope so. Not something we're very familiar with. Now you might wonder why we're spraying on wet ground on a rainy day. This spray actually needs water to work. He said the best case scenario is that you it's raining when you do it and you get about 8 to 10 mils straight after. You're supposed to get 10 mils of rain in, uh, in 10 days or something, within 10 days, but with the amount of moisture we've got around now they reckon it should be pretty bloody good. So um, yeah, we haven't done this before, we're not big spray people. What's happened here is that we've done a whole round of the farm quite quickly with winter cropping. So we're, I think we were 12 years to get round. The first three years we weren't doing a full 20 hectare ration. So um, it'll probably be 10 or 11 years this time. Plus we've got to take out a bit of steep ground potentially because of regional councils and government's stupid rules. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't see where I'm going. Oh, there we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what's happened is we haven't double or triple cropped which means that we haven't got a massive bank of weed seed in the soil but we have got a little one and what's happening this last season we did spray it I, I don't like spraying, I want to reduce my spray use as much as we can and the whole idea of the best way to do that to me is to use it where you need to, right? so if you've got weeds those weeds are going to go to seed those weeds are going to produce a whole lot more weeds the next year and of course we're cultivating between crops um, no one isn't doing that, some people aren't cultivating into crop, but no one is going from swedes to grass without cultivation and that stirs up all the weed seeds so the young grass can wind up quite untidy. Last year we had to use a product called Picus. it's enough to make a grown man cry. Pretty sure I showed you a little bit about that. Um, the swedes just curled up in a ball for like three weeks and were trying their hardest not to die and they didn't and the weeds did but it took three weeks of growth off them so we don't want to do that. This is a pre-emerge called Ombre, um, it's very expensive, there's a way you can do it with two different chemicals that's a bit cheaper but for this year we wanted to make sure we got this right, so we're using the flash one. Um, and it sits on the soil, gets washed into the soil, the brassica can come up through it, I think grass probably can too. Sorry, just new to this GoPro thing and the screen keeps turning off and I don't, hoping I'm not talking to you like that. Um, yeah, so yeah, 
the weeds as they come up through get burnt to a crisp and die so they they can't they don't produce any weed seeds therefore the young grass there'll be weeds in the young grass but they should be to a manageable level um just gotta love section control now at some point we'll get to see it he's got some fancy nozzles on they alternate one goes forward one goes back and you're supposed to get far better soil coverage which is quite cool see when he turns up the hill here if we can oh no he's got them turned off Jimmy's going to do this but straight up and down. So yeah, this is a preventative measure from having to use a whole lot more chemical. We will put the Versatil on uh, probably early January, maybe a bit later on. Uh, whether we get Mark to do that or whether we get the helicopter to do it, we'll just work out how many sprays we're going to have to do this year. Last year we probably should have done another two, and if we have to do another two, then I kind of feel like the, uh, the chopper is probably not economical because he costs a fair bit more per hectare than this. When you're doing one spray or two sprays, absolutely the chopper's economical. What you waste on your wheel marks more than covers that, or you know, is more than the extra cost of the chopper. But if we start having to do five or six sprays, we've got the fungicide we've got to do later on. So we'll start at the start. This one doesn't matter because the plants were put in the ground yesterday, they're not up yet. But we've got an insecticide and versatile to do, probably start of January sometime. Then we've possibly got another insecticide to do depending on the season. March, February, March, plus a fungicide. But what could happen this year is we may have to do another insecticide in a couple of weeks, no, in about a month, because there's this bloody um, green aphid which is spreading this virus around, which we got last year, and took a good 30% off our yields. Probably weren't going to yield that high last year anyway, but it definitely took something away and created a lot of rot. They just call it the virus, I forget what the official term is, but yeah, we've got to stop that getting in. Um, starting to sound like a lot of spraying but you have to remember this is only on eight percent of the farm <clears throat> the rest of the farm gets zero sprays so apart from a little bit of gore spray which we're using pearls for anyway um yeah so it it's becoming more on this area but it's only the cropped area and when we put it back in pasture the idea is to get a good pasture established uh, and then we don't have to use any sprays moving forward maybe a little bit on some young, young grass paddocks we had to do two of them this year but I'm hoping with this ombre going on that we won't have to do anything on the young grass next year. Although it hasn't hurt the young grass, it's just cost money. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I think we'll leave that there. That's a pretty mammoth effort now. That's all the groundwork done for the season. I think, I think we'll... There's one little one hectare paddock I'm contemplating putting in Swedes. I don't think we will. Um, that's a massive weight off our shoulders now. We can just move forward and focus on stock and a bit of grass. Make a bit of baleage, uh, what else have we got to do, a bit of topping, but yeah, mainly moving forward now, we're going to be on stock work and boating, fishing, so we're going to do a bit more of that this season too, both with and without kids. Catch you later guys.